Hey guys, so I've been scoping out adding a few mods to the Jeep like A-pillar lights, rock lights, that kind of stuff. So I wanted to go ahead and invest in a good switch panel and relay box. After doing a ton of research over the past month, looking at all the different options, I really think I found the best value by far in this Voss switch system. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at this Voss switch system, installing it on the Jeep, and then we'll hook some stuff up to it. So here's a look at everything that comes with the kit. We've got our eight switch switch panel, which will mount right above the windshield inside. We've got our control assembly, which houses all the relays and will mount in the engine bay. We've got some various other smaller parts and our instructions. I think we'll start off by taking a look at the control assembly. So here's our control assembly that's gonna house all the relays and fuses and everything. It's gonna mount in the engine bay using these two holes and we can go ahead and unscrew it and open it up. And inside here we have our eight 40 amp relays and also a 30 amp fuse for each accessory. Now up here we have 16 terminals. That's gonna be a positive and negative terminal for each one of the relays. And basically all we'll have to do to wire up an accessory is run the wire through the end of the relay box and into the positive and negative terminals for whichever relay and switch we wanna use. Here where the wires pass through the side of the control box, there's actually rubber grommets so that we can keep a little bit of that dust and debris out of our control box. Anyway, moving on to those three wires. First up, we've got our positive and negative battery connections, and these are gonna be eight gauge wire with a nice braided wire loom to protect them inside the engine bay. One thing I really like is this inline 100 amp fuse that's only about a foot away from the connection to the battery. That's gonna protect us in the event that any of this wire gets cut or damaged in the engine bay. We've also got our switch connection cable, which will run up to the firewall of the Jeep and into the switch panel. The kit also comes with an extra 100 amp fuse, a pack of wire connects for all our accessories, some zip ties for cable management, and a fuse tap and fuse tap connection cable. Those last two are gonna allow us to make the switch panel turn auto on and auto off with the Jeep, but we'll talk more about that during the install. And now we can move on to the actual switch panel. Across the front here, we've got our eight on off rocker switches. These are dual lit, so there's gonna be a light at the bottom that shines when the switch is off, and then another light at the top that shines when the switch is on. I selected the green option to match the interior light color of my Jeep, but there's also a red and blue option as well. To the left here, we have a touch sensitive button that serves as a master switch. I say touch sensitive, it doesn't have a physical moving part, it just detects when your finger's touching it. If we just tap it once, it'll turn the whole system off or on. And if we hold it down, it's actually gonna dim the lights in the switch panel from 100% brightness to, I believe, 50% brightness. Flipping it over to the back, Here's all our switches neatly wired around the back with each connection having a rubber boot to protect it. And one thing that's pretty cool is that every signal wire is actually numbered one through eight so that if we have to remove any switches, we'll be able to reinstall them without getting confused. The kit comes with 15 different switch cover plates and we'll talk more about those during the install. And it also comes with a switch cover plate removal tool and an extra rocker switch. All right, so we've talked about everything and I gotta say it's all looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and get started with the install. First up, we're gonna mount the control assembly in this open area on the driver's side. The two bolts can be removed using a 10 millimeter socket and can be reinstalled through the bracket. When tightening everything back up, you can adjust the position of the control box so it doesn't contact anything on either side. So there's the control assembly looking all good over there. And now I wanna talk about the two different ways you can wire this up. Right now it's wired up to just turn on and off with the button and it doesn't depend anything on the state of the Jeep. It can be on, off, whatever. I like that, and it actually has a built-in 11 volt cutoff, so it won't run your battery dead if you leave it on, but I'd rather have mine just automatically turn on when I turn the key in the Jeep, and then automatically turn off when we leave. To achieve this, we are going to use the fuse tap and extra cable. First, we need to move the orange fuse inside the control assembly from the F9 to the F10 position. Then we can attach our cable to the exposed terminal and run that cable all the way to the fuse box. To get inside the fuse box, we can cut a gash along the top edge or just drill a hole in the side. From there, we can use our fuse tap to tap into a fuse or empty slot that only has power when the key is in the on position. You can use the guide on the back of the fuse box lid to help you find the right slot, or you can just do trial and error like I did. The last step in the fuse tapping process is gonna to be to crimp the connection between these two wires, and then go ahead and kind of seal around where our wire pokes through the fuse box to make it watertight. 
Before I do that though, I need to take care of all these wires, routing them over here to the battery and fuse box. So here's a look at our beautiful wiring. It runs right across here. I left it kind of exposed so we could attach more stuff to it later. And the positive and negative come over here. Fuse tap goes in the fuse box. And the signal wire actually stops over here. Our last step in the engine bay is gonna to be to run our switch signal wire through the firewall. There's a good pass through right here on the driver's side. So I'm just gonna tape my switch cable to a coat hanger and poke it on through. If your pass through is sealed or only has a little bitty hole in it, you might have to cut a little gash in it in order to give our cable enough room. All right, so we've got our switch cable inside the Jeep and our next mission is gonna to be to route it all the way up to the center footman's loop right there above the windshield. Now to do this, we're gonna to have to remove the freedom panels, which I've already done, and we're gonna to have to remove a few interior panels along the way. The first panel we're gonna remove is this trim panel right here and it's secured with plastic clips all along the edge like this. You can stick a flathead screwdriver in the corner to get it out, but I'm just gonna kinda stick a finger back there, pull it out just a little bit, get that first tab to release, and then we can go ahead and pop it off. Next up, we're gonna have to remove the upper and lower pieces of the A-pillar trim. So the first step in that is gonna be to take our T20 Torx bit and remove the two bolts that hold this sun visor in place. Then we can go ahead and remove this plastic no pressure screw. Now I'm calling it a no pressure screw because if you apply any force down into the screw, it actually will jump threads and not come out. So now we have everything removed and we're gonna run the wire up here, up along the A-pillar, and it'll come out right here at the footman's loop. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the trim pieces as I go. All right, so we've got the wire ran up here coming out of this hole. We got plenty of extra wire. I just have a little bit sticking out and we can go ahead and attach it to the switch panel. If you have a 2009 and up Jeep, your footman loop's gonna be right here off center to the left. So you'll wanna make sure this bar is also in the off center position. If you have a 2008 or 2007, you can go ahead and move this bar to the center position because your footman loop's gonna be a little bit further to the right. Anyway, this is gonna go ahead and mount up here like this and that's gonna be our final goal. Once we're ready for the final mount, we can go ahead and peel off the adhesive cover of the sticky tape on the back, set it into place and push it all the way back, and then install the two included small screws in the bottom left and bottom right. From there, all we need to do is tighten up our footman loop a little bit. Each of these bolts are gonna need a seven millimeter end wrench to tighten properly. I don't have one of those, so I'm just gonna be using some pliers. Our last step in the install is to snap in our switch cover plates. Like I said earlier, the kit comes with 15 different switch cover plates. There are 10 for the various lights you might want to add to your Jeep, and then 5 for some other accessories. Once you pick out the plates you want to run, they can be easily pressed into the panel. So now let's go ahead and test out all the switches. With the key in, the switch panel is on and every accessory is turned off, as you can see by the lights being lit on the bottom. But when we go to turn on the accessories, the bottom light will turn off and the top light will actually turn on for whichever one you have activated. Another thing I noticed is that the brightness is actually more adjustable than I thought. So this is full dim and when you hold it down, it will go all the way to full bright, which is good. But say you want somewhere in between full dim and full bright, well, if you just hold it down and then release it before it gets all the way dim or all the way bright, it'll actually hold at that level. So that's pretty cool. Another thing to note is that it'll actually remember the brightness level. So when you turn off the vehicle and turn it back on, your switch panel will still be at the same brightness. And the last thing I want to note about the panel is the location. I think it's really good and easy to reach up there, but it's also not distracting. I've driven it a few times at night so far. And as long as you don't have the panel on full brightness, you really don't notice it at all. So we've got everything installed and we can finally hook something up. I've mounted up two light pods in the bumper of the Jeep and all we're gonna have to do to wire them up is crimp on the two wire connects and screw them into the correct terminals.
All right, so final thoughts on the kit are that it is definitely worth it. Really the only problem I saw was that I wish it had a latch on the side rather than just the twist in locking screw because I might lose that screw eventually, but really that's not that big of a deal. I would say if you're in the market for a switch panel, you're looking at adding some stuff or you have a really cluttered engine bay because of all your 16 relays, this kit is definitely for you and I would encourage you to look around a little bit because this kit really stood out to me as a good value. You get a custom built for your Jeep control assembly, a custom built switch panel that's actually kind of smart and remembers the brightness, has a master switch, all that cool stuff. And it's gonna be super simple to work with in the future as opposed to having your own DIY relay box in the engine bay and having to work with that. If you do want a few fewer switches though, they also have a four switch panel that goes on the A-pillar. I like it, but I really wanted eight just because I have a lot of plans in the future. Anyway, I'll have everything linked in the description down below. And if you have any questions, you can leave a comment down below. Also, please feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoy Jeep stuff. Next video, we'll be installing some A-pillar lights on the Jeep, so that'll be pretty cool. Anyway, I'll catch you on the next one.